Did you know that in Laney you can compute thickness and curvature? As usual, today I am going to start with showing you the data. So here you are seeing an anatomical region that I have cut out. And this data is at around 0.2 mm isotropic resolution. And I'm going to show you what will be the input that I'm going to use in the next step. As you can see, this is my segmentation of this region. Okay, now I'm going to use Laney to compute curvature and thickness of gray matter in this region. To do that, I navigate to my Laney terminal. And call ln2 layers. I give the default input, the segmentation file. And now I'm going to input two extra parameters, which is thickness and the other one is curvature. So now let's wait for it to run. Okay, after a couple of minutes it has finished. Now let's inspect our outputs. As you can see, we have the layers, metric and middle gray matter outputs as I have talked about in the previous videos. But in addition we have three new outputs. So now first let's have a look at the cortical thickness output. Load it as an additional image. Here you can see that now this file shows us the cortical thickness for each gray matter voxel. And I can quickly inspect the histogram of the values, which is between 2 millimeters up to 4 millimeters. So that, that seems reasonable with the peak around like almost 3 millimeters. Notice that in the edge regions of my segmentation I tend to measure very high values of cortical thickness. This is alright. Uh, you just need to make sure that in the region of interest that you care about, for instance here, for me it was the Heschel's gyrus and not the other regions that are at the edge, th these values will be more correct. So make sure to segment a bit more than you need to get the cortical thickness values correctly. Now let's have a look at the other outputs. The second one is the curvature. I'm loading it as an additional image. And I load these curvature values with a special color map that you can see here. It basically has a like, opacity dip in the center because the curvature values that I have measured are between minus 1 to 1 and I want to blind myself to 0 when I load it as an overlay on top of my anatomy. You can see that the curvature values span from minus 1 to 1 and as you can see with this color map the gyrus is in red whereas the salsi are in blue. So now the last output which is a, a bit more handy version of this floating precision curvature output and that is the bint version of it. So here you can see that sulcus and gyrus are bint separately into two different integers 1 and 2 and now I can use this to classify my morphology. Of course, you can decide to bin the continuous curvature measurements into any number of classes that you want by writing a simple script. That's all for today. Thanks.